The sine and cosine laws are two formulas based on sine and cosine. You can see that cosine is loosely attributed to the Pythagorean theorem. Now these can be used for any triangle at all. You're not limited to right triangles with these two laws. Now I'm going to give you a couple of examples of solving the triangles, which means to find all the angles and all the sides, and we'll use the sine and cosine laws to do that. The sine law is a ratio comparing the side of an angle to its corresponding side. So in this case, 26 degrees, the sine of that angle is compared to S, and the sine of 83 is compared to T, and the sine of my unknown angle here is compared to 53. My unknown angle can be quickly figured out by subtracting from 180. So minus 26, minus 83, and I'll get 71 degrees. I'm gonna to try to find all of the sides and all of the angles. I'm gonna use sine law. So I'm gonna set up my full ratio, comparing sine 26 to my unknown side of S, sine 83 to my unknown side of T and sine 71 to my known side of 53. You can see I have one complete ratio and two ratios that are incomplete. So I'm going to use my complete ratio now to solve. So sine 71 compared to 53 is the same ratio as sine 26 compared to S. Cross multiply to solve. So 53 sine 26 degrees all over sine 71. And you will get S to be approximately 25. If you're clever with your calculator, you can do that full calculation in one step. Otherwise, please use your ratios to four decimal places and write them down individually and then carefully multiply and divide through. Again, I'm gonna start with the ratio that I already know, sine 71 degrees over 53, and I'm gonna use it to find my unknown side of T. The reason I use the ratio that is full and complete is that I don't want to make a mistake. Perhaps this answer somehow is wrong. This will give me a better chance of finding the correct solution for t. So again, using cross multiplication, 53 times sine 83. You'll notice that you don't need brackets here. You can certainly use them if that helps you sine 71, and you will get t to equal 56. So t equals 56, s equals 25, and you have now solved your triangle, all the sides, all the angles. So in my second example, I'm going to use the sine law in the opposite fashion. And I only have one angle. I've only got 35. So when I'm setting up my ratios now, it's gonna look a little different. But I've got its corresponding side length, which is good. So, 42 compared to sine 35, that's my complete ratio. That's gonna equal little e compared to the sine of angle e which is 64 compared to the sine of angle D. You notice in the middle, I don't have either of the numbers. So I'm gonna take my complete ratio and use it to solve. And I think I have to, I don't think I have any choice. 
I can find one unknown at a time. So I'm going to compare those two and solve for the sine of D, ultimately giving me the angle. So 42 over sine 35 equals 64 over the sine of D. Cross multiply the sine of D equals 64 sine 35 divided by 42. The ratio of sine D will give you 0 0.8740. And once you reverse that, you will get angle D to equal 61 degrees. And now you have to find the angle and the side length at E. Well, you have two angles already, so you can easily find the third. Subtract 61 and 35 from 180, and you now know the angle here is 84 degrees. So now you have one more piece of the puzzle. You just have the one unknown, which is length E. So again, back to the original full ratio, 42 over sine 35 is going to equal the side length of E that you don't know compared to the sine of the angle that you just discovered, which is 84 degrees. Cross multiply. So 42 sine 84 divided by sine 35 degrees. My fives are looking like sixes. And you will get E to equal 73. And now you have solved your triangle. There are two forms of the cosine law, one that you would use to find a side length and one that you would use to find the cosine ratio and then convert it to its angle. I'm gonna show you how to go from one to the other. So the first thing I'm gonna to try to do is get rid of my negative 2BC cos A from the right-hand side. I'm gonna place it on the right. That negative value now becomes positive, so 2BC cos A now equals B squared plus C squared. I wanna get the A squared to my other side. It's positive on the left and now becomes negative on the right, and you can see we're getting fairly close, fairly quickly. I'm trying to isolate cos A to get that all by itself. So I will divide both sides by 2BC. And now my 2BC on the left will cancel each other out and become one. And there it is, cos A equals b squared plus c squared minus a squared all over 2bc. They're exactly the same formula, one's just in a different form. And now two problems using cosine law. On the left hand side, I'll use the cosine law to find a length. I need to decide whether r, s, or t is now the equivalent of a squared. So in this case, S will now be A. And I need to make sure that I remember on the other side that's now cos S. B and C are interchangeable. So let's begin. S squared equals my two adjacent sides squared. So 36 squared plus 52 squared minus 2 times my adjacent sides, cos my paired angle. Now you can do that all in one calculation if you have a high degree of calculator savvy, or you can do them separately. So 36 squared is 1296. 
52 squared is 27 to 4. I would do all of this in one calculation. I always start with the cosine ratio first and then multiply backwards. And so that value will be 27, 82, 33. Do the addition and subtraction, you will get 12, 17, 67. And then what you want to do is square root both sides. So square root both sides. And S will become approximately 35. Now I'm not going to solve for the other two angles at this point, but I will do all three angles in a second example. So in my second example, I need to decide which angle to find first. And I think I'll find the angle at F first. So it's cos F. I need to make sure that over here, this is going to be F squared. So now cos F equals the two adjacent sides again, right? Squared up, so 62 squared plus 51 squared minus the side length opposite all over twice the two adjacent sides. Okay, once you've done your calculations, you will get a ratio of 65-48. That is the ratio. Reverse the ratio, and you will get, again, an approximation of 49 degrees. So I've got 49 degrees in this corner. I could use cosine law two more times to find the angle at D and at E. But I think what I want to do is show you a slightly more efficient way to find the next angle. I'm going to use sine law to find the angle at D. Sine law to use the angle at D. So it's sine D compared to its length of 62 equals the ratio I know, which is sine 49 degrees compared to the side length I know. Cross multiply. So sine D equals 62 sine 49 divided by 48. The ratio will be 97 48 and the angle at D will be 77 degrees. If that's 77 and the other one is 49, then the unknown angle now is 54. Subtract the two that you already know from 180. And I think that's the most efficient way to find all three sides and all three angles. Thanks for listening.